All right, welcome again, guys, to another G Squared Academy video where you know excellence is epitomized as usual. Today, what we want to look at is in an actual planning and designing lab. Um, and this one is about microbial growth. So, of course, you know, you have to do PE labs. It's a part of the skills that you need to develop um, in the CXE program. Um, so I'm just going through a lab here with you more labs to come, but I'm just doing this one today, microbial growth PD. Okay, so first of all, you know, you have to be faced with a problem. So the problem, as you can see there, is during the COVID-19 pandemic, G wondered what would be best to use to remove microbes from her hands. She had wipes, hand sanitizer, alcohol, and soap. Plan and design an experiment to help G with her problem. Right. So we are living in the pandemic currently, and people would have this sort of question. What is best to use to kill microbes? What's best to use to get rid of um, the, the virus causing COVID-19? So this is, this is a very timely and good lab um, for that purpose. So that's your hypothesis. I'm sorry, your problem statement. Just a reminder of the problem statement there now on the screen. So what is the hypothesis? Um, this is a hypothesis of the agents given alcohol will kill the most microbes. Um, and if you have any difficulty coming up with your hypothesis or any parts of this um, planning and designing lab, I would suggest that you watch the video, how to write up a planning and designing lab, which is now um, in the top right of your screen. So watch that video before you proceed into this one. But if you have the experience, let us just continue, all right? So the hypothesis of the agents given alcohol will kill um, the most microbes. Position taken, you had, an op you had other options, but the position is taken and this is testable. So that's two marks right there, all right? Of course, you know, you're gonna need your standard headings when you're writing up your lab. Okay, again, a problem statement, just to remind you. So the name is there, G Squared Academy. This is lab number one. The date is there as well. The skill is there as well. Um, the topic we're looking at is health and sanitation. And the thing about PDs is that a number of topics could work. I've just chosen health and sanitation because it seems to epitomize the problem that I'm facing with um, most. So health and sanitation. The aim is to determine which cleaning agent removes the most microbes from its surface. Okay, so that's what we're trying to figure out here, which cleaning agent is best at doing that. So we're proceeding. All right, so now what are the things that we're gonna need for this experiment? Okay, we're gonna need agar plates to grow microbes. We're gonna need hand sanitizer, we're gonna need alcohol, soap, wipes, um, we need a surface like the hand, um, measuring cylinder, beaker, incubator. All right, so those are just some of the things that we need for this experiment. All right, so we're pressing along. Now, what are the steps we're gonna take? First thing, reminder again, we're gonna gather all our apparatus and materials. Notice that I've written this in present tense, present command tense. Right, label the agar plates, wipes, W, hand sanitizer, HS, alcohol, A, and soap, S. Measure 20 mils of alcohol and pour it in a beaker. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna rub your hand or run your hand across a high traffic surface, like the doorknob or the tables, because what's the point of just washing your hands and just doing this thing or putting your hand on a wall, right? And, and running the test. You want to place your hand, you want to expose yourself, so to speak, um, to surfaces where you're gonna get a high traffic, high volume people using it. Doorknobs is very good, tables are very good. They so run your hand across it, okay? Then you're gonna place one finger in the alcohol for 20 seconds. You're not scrubbing nothing at all. You're just placing it in the alcohol for 20 seconds, right? Or you could scrub, but rub gently, all right? Then now, um, uh, you remove the finger and you gently touch the agar plate labeled A with that, okay? Then after you've done that, you're gonna place the plate in an incubator for three days. Then repeat steps three, five, six, and seven, which you can always look back on and just repeat them using the hand sanitizer. 
Now, the issue is the wipes and uh, the, the other cleaning agent, which is the soap, you can't measure necessarily 20 mils of those. So what you're going to do for the wipes now is you're just going to wipe the finger for 20 seconds. And then you're going to repeat step six and seven. So you're going to place it in the jar, um, the agar plate, the respective agar plates, and then um, put it in the incubator. So for that one, for the soap now, you're going to just wash the finger for 20 seconds. And then you touch the agar plate, mark, mark S, and place it in the um, incubator for the three days, all right? Then of course you record your observations. So you have done the preliminary stuff, now let us proceed, all right? So your variables now, all right? So your variables, your three variables are four, um, if you remember from the video that I did. So your manipulated variable, what are you changing? You're changing the type of cleaning agent you're using, okay? So you're using alcohol, hand sanitizer, et cetera. What will be affected by that change now is the amount of microbes that grow. Okay, that is what is being affected by it. Okay, or how clean your hand is. But you're measuring how clean the surface is based on the microbial growth. Okay, so this would be a better um, responding variable. Then now you're controlled. What are you keeping constant? So you're keeping constant the time the surface is clean for. Um, so your finger, that is, your finger is in each of them are being cleaned for 20 seconds. The incubation period has to be kept constant as well, which was three days. The amount of cleaning agent used, you really want to keep that constant um, so that there are no biases. But we'll look at this shortly um, in terms of it actually being the same amount used. All right. Then now your, your control what you're gonna compare results to now is an agar plate without anything. So you don't touch it, it's just a clean agar plate, new, freshly touched. And of course, this is also incubated as well um, with the other agar plates, right? So what do you expect to happen? And uh, it is expected here that the agar plate with the alcohol will show the least amount of microbial growth. Your expected results must be based on your hypothesis. In your hypothesis, it was said that you expect the alcohol to show the least amount of microbial growth. So therefore, you need to expect that. You can't say something and not expect it to happen. It is expected. Notice we start with it is expected that the agar plate with the alcohol will show the least amount of microbial growth. All right. Then now um, we're proceeding into your data to be collected. So how are you going to collect the data? How are you going to represent your results? As I said in previous videos, cables are always very good, and this has not changed. Now notice here our, in our table, we have our agar plates, and then the agar plates with the different um, cleaning agents. And over on this side, we have a picture. Well, a picture um, can tell, um, gives us a thousand words, really, or they tell a better um, story than just necessarily writing words. And in the case of an agar plate, it's always good to take a picture of what you have gotten and then place it in a table like this. So somebody could just simply look at it and say, you know, I can see more growth of microbes in this one versus that one. And this, of course, is would be replacing trying to count the microbes um, in the plate. So using a picture is excellent here. And of course, you know, this is the 21st century, 2021. People like visuals, they like seeing things and it gives your project a nice clean, clean look, right? So that's your data to be collected. Now, what are some of the limitations or sources of errors for this experiment? What we cannot control? Well, we can't control the amount of cleaning agent used, right? So the situation is we could measure the, um, the hand sanitizer and the alcohol. And we're assuming here that their densities are the same, which they're probably not. Um, but we could measure the 20 mils. But then for the soap and the wipes, we can't really say how much of it we use. We can only say, okay, we use one wipe and we clean for 20 seconds. So um, really, this is something we can't control because it's not like we could melt it or dissolve it or something like that, right? So that's a limitation. 
Another one, and of course, you only need one limitation. Generally speaking, you only need one. Um, opening the plates, expose them to microbes. So to place your finger into the agar plate, you're going to need to open it. There's no way your finger is gonna touch the agar plate so without you opening it. And when you open it, there are microbes in the air and you will expose them to that, even briefly, but still they have been exposed, okay? Then the exposure to microbes for each finger may be different. So even though you have rubbed your hand or run your hand across these, the microbes that they're exposed to may just be different. It is possible that that's the case. And so because of that, um, this can affect your results indeed. All right, so there you have three limitations or sources of errors. You only need one. All right, so pressing on. Then the next thing now we want to look at our precautions. What must we do to protect ourselves and to make our experiment better? Um, first thing here, do not open the agar plate after microbial growth. We do not know what is in there. We may suspect certain things are there, but it may be something else. Something else may be in the air, which gets on your plate and starts growing. That thing could be something very dangerous. So you don't want to open the plate after there's microbial growth, okay? Try to open the plate or expose the plates to air as minimally as possible, okay? So when you have to put your finger in there to, to um, start the growth, as much as possible, just limit the exposure to air. Just two precautions, you only need one, of course. And here's another one, label the plates accurately. Okay, this is important because if you were to report your findings to someone and you didn't label accurately or you have doubts about your labeling, then people are gonna have doubts in your results too. So you need to label accurately. Of course, as I said before, you only need one of these things, okay? Then coming up to the end now, our assumptions, what do we assume? First thing, we assume that all fingers were exposed to the same amount of microbes, same amount and types as well. Okay, we're assuming that. Then we assume that the growth um, are from the fingers and not from elsewhere. So we're assuming that the microbes that we see on our agar plate at the end of the experiment are going to be microbes from our finger and not from the air, not from something else. Okay, we're assuming that there's no contamination. All right, the rate of growth of microbes is similar. So you, it, it is that you're exposed to a number of microbes and you're assuming that these microbes grow at the same rate. So therefore you have incubated for three days. Is it possible that some of the microbes on the hand or on the finger um, grow slower? Um, so therefore, after three days, they're just starting to grow, but you have removed the plate after three days. So you're assuming that the microbes that they're exposed, been exposed to grow at the same rate. So therefore, at the end of three days, you would have given all microbes a chance to grow, okay? Um, another one, the amount of cleaning agent use is just about the same. As I said, densities and... Uh, all of these things play a part here. So you may use 20 mils of alcohol and 20 mils of um, hand sanitizer, saying that they're the same volume, but because of their densities, they may be different, but you're gonna assume that they're the same in this context, okay? So it could be different, but you're gonna assume that they are the same. And there you have it, guys. This is just a quick run through of a planning and designing lab, an actual planning and designing lab. I hope you found it helpful. Please leave a comment. What type of um, video would you want to hear from G Squared Academy? What do you want us to explain for you? You know, share with your friends, like the video, subscribe to the channel G Squared Academy, where you know excellence is epitomized. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.